Hi, this is Rosalind from A Little R&R, and, R, and uh, I want to talk to you today about three ways that we can avoid becoming like Esau, who despised his birthright, and um, how we can um, avoid becoming like him and despising the grace of God and the blessing of God in our life. Um, and with Good Morning Girls, we have been looking at this week, uh, we've been reading Genesis 28 through 34. Um, here in this region, we're one chapter behind. Um, so we've been reading those chapters and we've, we've, we've been looking at the life of Abraham. I am so fascinated this time with the life of Abraham. I have um, heard the stories, of course, about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob my whole entire life. I have read the stories myself hundreds of times. This is the first time I've ever looked at the lives, the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in this way. And so we see a family that is fighting and they're manipulating each other or lying and cheating and and there's jealousy there's envy there's um all kinds of there's half truths being spoken and yet god continues to honor his covenant with them and um, he continues to bless them it is, it is amazing to me because if you took this family out of um out of that era and you stuck them in 2014 I think we would see a little bit of a different response from our end towards them I don't believe of course that God's response to them would be different but I think that our view of them would be different than it is today um, and that is um, because we I think a lot of times we are afraid to approach grace from this perspective because we are so afraid that in and that in receiving the grace of God as he gives it to us that we will begin to take that grace lightly. Um, and we need to understand that grace shouldn't be taken lightly, that we cannot live a life of willful sin. It says in Romans 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who have died to sin live, in, live any longer in it? And Paul is urging us to maintain a holy life. And that is important. We need to maintain a holy life. Um, and yet, despite all of our efforts to maintain a holy life, we see what Paul says about himself here. For the good that I will do, that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. And we look down even further at verse 24. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? We see that Paul said, the things that I don't want to do, I keep doing. And the things that I really want to do, I don't do. And that is because we have this war inside of ourselves. We have our spirit that has the fear of the Lord and wants to walk, walk in a holy life, that wars against our flesh, that wants to do things that it wants to do. It wants to rebel. And um, that war is actually important for us because uh, Hebrews says that if we live a life of willful sin, there is no sacrifice that remains for us. Um, living in willful sin is a very dangerous thing. Um, and it is a thing that what, it is what, what destroys our relationship with Jesus Christ. And so this fight to live a holy life is very important. Um, and yet the question is, is what is our motivation to live a holy life? Is our motivation to live a holy life so that we can earn the grace and blessing of God? Do we feel like God graces us and blesses us because we live a holy life? Or do we live a holy life because we love him and we want to maintain that relationship with him? The two motivations are very, very different. And we see this illustrated so well in the marriage relationship. I don't remain a faithful wife to my husband so that I um, earn his favor of me. I remain faithful to my husband because I love him and I do not want to destroy our marriage relationship. And he does not love me and accept me as his wife because I am faithful to him. He accepts me as his wife because he loves me. And so the motivation is different. Um, I honor him as my husband. I honor our relationship, and therefore, I remain faithful to our relationship. It doesn't even enter my my mind to um, have an affair with anybody else because I don't want to destroy my relationship with him. And so that motivation is different, and our motivation to remain faithful and holy to the Lord needs to be based out of our love and honor of him, not seeking his grace and blessing. And so the two motivations are very, very different. And so... In, in looking at grace from that perspective, how do we keep from becoming like Esau? How do we keep our hearts from not becoming hard? How do we keep from despising the grace of God 
and misusing the grace of God and accepting an easy believism or an easy, grease, easy greasy grace. Well, I think that there are three, three ways that we keep from doing that. And the first way is to invest in our relationship with God. We have to have daily time in the Word and in prayer. That is so important to our relationship. We have to feed that relationship. And we do that through devotion. And so we need to have that daily time in Him. And as we invest in that relationship, we begin to understand how that relationship works even better. We begin to hear the heart of God. We know what pleases Him, what doesn't please Him. We do what pleases Him, and we avoid doing what, what displeases Him. The second way is to remain in covenant. There is no greater way to understand grace than when you have to become a giver of that grace. We have been rich recipients of the grace of God, and we need to give that grace. And so in understanding how much grace that we receive on a daily basis to maintain that relationship with Jesus Christ um, and understanding that, you know what, when I sin, God forgives me of that sin. And so that grace that is there for me to remain humble before the Lord, to seek that, that forgiveness from sin, um, I have to then uh, give that forgiveness, give that grace to someone else. And so that community, remaining in that community, keeps us humble, keeps us understanding that the, um, the, the uh, way that grace flows into our life and out of our life to other people. And then walking in humility. Walking in humility is so important. Walking in humility in the fear of the Lord. It is so important to our relationship because um, in walking in humility in the fear of the Lord, we don't, we avoid falling for the lie that God will tolerate our sin. God will not, God is, does not tolerate sin. Like we, saw, like we see in Hebrews, it says that walking in willful sin, um, walking in willful sin, there is no longer a, uh, a sacrifice for us. Um, it says here uh, in Psalms 103 that as far, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are but dust. This is so important because the fear of the Lord is what keeps us humble. There's a difference between between him understanding our frame and us living in willful sin. Um, understanding that though we seek to live holy, though we seek to live separated from the world, uh, we are still humans. There will be a moment when we will fail. There will be a moment when we uh, make a wrong choice. There will be a moment when we do something and we walk away and we, and we regret what we have just done. There will be a moment when we make a right decision the wrong way. And God understands that. And when we come to Him in humility, and when we understand the fear of the Lord is what drives me to the throne of God to seek forgiveness for that sin so that I do not have a break in my relationship with the Lord. Um, in doing that, uh, we keep our hearts soft before Him. We keep our hearts from becoming like Esau who despised his birthright. We, we will not despise that grace of God. Walking willful sin is not the same as this because walking willful sin uh, assumes that God is just going to look the other way. The fear of the Lord um, helps us to understand that God doesn't look the other way. He expects us when we sin to come before him and receive that forgiveness. And so these three things will keep us from becoming like Esau. They will keep us in wa walking in the grace and the forgiveness of God, which is so important to our relationship with him.